set for tip-off between the top-seeded UConn Huskies, the eighth-seeded St. John's Red Storm, in the Big East Women's Quarterfinals. Time for the starting lineup, sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. For St. John's, the junior wing, Kadeja Bailey, is the Swiss Army Knife, Joe Tardamella calls her, had eight assists yesterday against Xavier. On the flip side for UConn, Gino Oriema is eyeing Christian Williams, his junior, to take the next steps here in March. Kim, who else are you eyeing? Well, for St. John's, Unique Drake has stepped into the starting point guard role and is really starting to find her confidence, averaging 17 a game in the last four for the Johnnies. And then Olivia Nelson Adota at 6'5 has really dominated the Big East, but she's going to see some more size today. St. John's with 6'3 and 6'4 in the front court. Huskies in the white, Johnnies in the navy. Nelson Adota wins the tip, and we are underway. A four-game quarterfinal Saturday in the Big East Tournament. Nelson Adota. Farley stopped her, and it's a travel. Yeah, right away you see the impact of that size. Raven Farley, number four at 6'4", and then Raven Peoples coming up the floor at 6'3". Those two will do their best to try and defend Nelson Adota. How does St. John's get off to a better start offensively? Well, they definitely have to take care of the ball. Turnovers have plagued them in the first two meetings with UConn in this season, so that's number one, just not allowing UConn to get out and run. Six on the shot clock. Here is Correa. Bailey with the steal. Nelson Adota shut her down. It'll stay with St. John's. Joe Tartamella is in his ninth year as the head coach of the Red Storm. He is second with 170 wins all time with St. John's after that victory over Xavier yesterday. Our officials, Jules Galley and Mark Resch, Crystal Apollinis with an early discussion with the players. Just making sure, you know, first game of four, making sure everyone's ready to go. Ducks in a row. Right away, John, you see some switching. Williams matched up with Farley, undersized down there, but Farley's not looking for the ball. The senior thought about it, gives it back out to Correa with 12. She's 0 for 2 to start. Bailey, though, making some extra plays. And we mentioned her in the open. She is somebody who creates steals, but Coach Tartamella needs her to score more if they want to be in this game. Coach Tartamella told... Bailey, you got to act like you're trying to score 30 today. Three on the shot clock for Drake, who's short. Nika Mule can't flip that up, and here comes Correa. Farley left open. And here's Williams from Beckers. Kristen Williams. And a long rebound against this team, John, may as well be a turnover, as we saw there. So St. John's has to be able to sprint back off of misses, stop the ball, and locate players down the floor. And here's a turnover. Mule. Nika Mule with the give. UConn sharing it well. Beckers with the offensive rebound. Nelson Adota on the run. Uncharacteristic for the Huskies. And St. John's getting lucky because not everybody sprinted back. Bailey sprinted back, missed the layup, and still five Red Storm players weren't down the floor. Joe Tartamella telling us that he felt like his team needs to play faster, though, because he said to beat UConn, we've got to be able to score just over 30 points in the last meeting with the Huskies. Raven Peoples with the drive and hoop. Raven Peoples, somebody first year with St. John's, a junior college transfer, really starting to find some confidence offensively. 
Had 10 points yesterday. Has shot well over 50% from the field on the season. That time, Correa would not let Beckers get that to Nelson Adota. Williams. Correa pulls. Nelson Adota with the left hand. And that's transition defense, John. That's five players sprinting down the floor. If, if four players sprint down, that's what's going to happen. It has to be one to five. Everybody getting back in transition, especially around the rim. And now Mika Mule stepping in with the defense nearly had the steal. On the flip side in this coaching matchup, in his 36th season, the Hall of Famer, Gino Oriema, the fastest coach to get to 1,100 wins in the history of college basketball. And I don't know if anybody's happier to be here in Mohegan Sun today than Coach Oriema, who was just so happy to be back in the Big East Conference. Even when we talked to him last year, when it was announced that they would be returning, I mean, I had his, his game at Seton Hall, and he was just like a kid in a candy store looking up at the banners, thinking about Walsh Gym, and now he is back in the Big East tournament. Oh, costly turnover here. Avina Westbrook, too easy. And it's been all transition, fast break so far for UConn. St. John's needs to start to adjust there and protect the ball on their own end. Correa. And Lonnie Correa trying to get going, still without a field goal. Beckers up ahead to Williams. Williams and one. UConn has just been on the move. A couple trips now in a row down the floor, but Kristen Williams, one of the few experienced players in a Huskies jersey, on the attack early, aggressive mindset, right to the rack. I was talking with Gino Oriema earlier this week, and he said, well, Kristen Williams is a great player and has averaged over 15 points per game, second leading scorer. But he said, Kim, that he's had to challenge her and say, hey, this is not just the Paige Becker show. Peoples, two for two. But yeah, there was, you know, times during the season when Williams was really struggling to shoot from the floor, but she's definitely got her footing back, got that rhythm, and I think they can realize how much they can help each other, Williams and Beckers. Nelson Adota. And she traveled. St. John's will have it after our first time out. The Huskies out and running early in this one, John. Defense to offense, Avina Westbrook taking it coast to coast. Kristen Williams, one of the juniors on this team. Huskies out and running early. UConn out to a five-point lead on St. John's in the Big East quarterfinals. Earlier this week, the Big East regular season awards announced, and Kim Adams, no surprise, the Huskies is clearing out the trophy shelf. Yeah, a handful of awards here. Paige Beckers, we mentioned, both the freshman and player of the year, joined on the first team by Kristen Williams, Nelson Adota on the second team, but the co-defensive player of the year, along with Selena Lott from Marquette. And then Aaliyah Edwards, we haven't seen her yet today. She'll come off the bench, another impressive freshman, and of course, at the helm, a 21 and one season thus far, Coach Gina Oriema. 17 time Big East Coach of the Year. And what's interesting of all those awards, he actually said, well, my biggest takeaway was Olivia Nelson Adota wasn't on the first team, and she's motivated because of it. Yeah, I was actually very surprised to see that because, like we mentioned off the top, I think she's been the X factor in their Big East run this year because there's not many back-to-the-basket type post players that can really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with her in this conference. UConn has a pair of terrific post players, two on the shot clock for Correa, and UConn has really made it tough for her to get going as she commits a foul. 
Yeah, I mean, Leilani Correa is, is no stranger to being the focus of defenses. It's what she's had to deal with all season, but UConn has a couple of players who are really just switching on to her. We've seen Williams guard her. That time it was Westbrook, so she's going to have length and speed guarding her throughout this game. Paige Becker with the first points of her postseason. And she could score from anywhere, John, but she's really impressive with that mid-range jumper, just so smooth into the elevation. St. John's head coach Joe Tartamella telling us yesterday, there's no question in his mind who the best player in the country is. It's Paige Beckers. Eight on the shot clock. People's got stuck now with four. Farley with two with the heave. And the Huskies defense rolling. And Paige Beckers, I mean, I think we could have predicted that she might get Big East Freshman of the Year, but I don't know if people expected her to come in and be Player of the Year. You just see the fundamentals there coming off of the handoff screen, staying low and getting her looks. Only one other player in the four-plus decade history of the Big East Conference has pulled off the Player and Freshman of the Year sweep. That would be none other than one Maya Moore in 2008. Very good company to be in. Mika Mule off the steal. That's exactly what she says she brings to this team, the defensive energy. UConn already up to seven fast break points. St. John's with four early turnovers. Make it five. Mule is everywhere. Now a foul on Drake. Nika Mule is just a pest defensively. Another freshman. This team very young and just staying in that stance, moving her feet laterally. Nika Mule, a freshman who really has, has stepped up. She entered the starting lineup about midway through the season, and Coach Oriema has just heavily relied on these young stars. Kristen Williams couldn't fit that. Over Correa. Henry Clegg with the stop and go. Pretty finish. Clegg did the same thing yesterday in that win over Xavier. She came in off the bench. She brought energy. She really brings that intensity on defense. The Clemson transfer and now an offensive foul on the Huskies. St. John's wants to get in this game, John. They're going to have to do a little bit more of this, a little bit more tempo, primary break, secondary break. Camry Clegg coming in off the bench and just brings some confidence and the ability to break down the UConn defense right away. To your point, Joe Tadamala kept saying it. He goes, what UConn's so good at is they play fast, but not too fast. He said, we can't be in a hurry, but we have got to play faster in this game. And UConn defends so well that you'd rather try and get them on the move than allow them to come down and get set up and have Nelson Adota just planted in the paint. Five on the shot clock. Farley now with two. Needs a prayer. Couple possessions now for St. John's. Just no shot clock awareness. And there's Nelson Adota on the other end of transition. In a couple possessions now, they've ended up with the ball in the hands of Raven Farley at, at the top of the key as the shot clock is winding down. That is not the look they want. We've got another offensive foul here. That's on Clay. Well, Aliyah Edwards has stepped on the floor as Avina Westbrook, that is big, Kim limping off. Yeah, she goes back with the athletic training staff. We will keep an eye on that. That's one thing about this UConn team in our discussions. Mule off the screen and paints it home. Nika Mule, what a start 
in her first Big East tournament. Five points, a pair of steals. Yeah, Mule really locking down on the defensive end, and then her teammates doing a great job of moving without the ball to get her that look. Oh, Nelson Adota with a rejection on Correa. Here comes Mule again. Mule, pretty give to the corner. Nelson Adota is relentless right now. Beckers. Tipped out to Nelson Adota. That's already her fifth rebound. You're seeing her impact. I mean, she just, she has a clear size advantage in this matchup. We saw the block, saw her crash in the glass. Beckers. Off on a pair here, but another offensive board. Now the shot clock turned off. Kristen Williams. The Huskies got five attempts now with four seconds. Here's Bailey. The give, Clegg with a heave, and that does it for the first quarter. UConn's defensive activity was the priority, Kim, in this postseason. And the Huskies hold St. John's to just six points in the opening 10 minutes. Tennessee transfer for UConn, Avina Westbrook getting the left ankle taped up after she appeared to turn it here in the first quarter. Yeah, just a little bit of a defensive play here and just caught the landing. Oof, the right just hit that landing wrong. The left ankle going down a little bit, but Avina Westbrook was getting taped up during that timeout, and it appears like she will get ready to come back in this game, John. I mean, she's been waiting a while to get into Big East tournament play as she sat out last season. Well, Gina Oriema calls her the heart and soul of this team. No surprise to see her toughing it out. And on the flip side, Kim, St. John's with more of the same problems they had 17 days ago when they met the Huskies. Yeah, they had just 32 points in that game. Leilani Correa was held to just two points. You see the 21 turnover, so it's a similar start here. I think St. John's has gotten caught in some bad spots. They have to make sure they're running through their offense and putting their players in, in places where they can succeed. Bailey with a head of steam. Becker's defending it. Hand off from Yule to Becker's. And Paige Becker's trying to find that three-point shot. Here's a two-for-one run out. Clyde can't connect. Correa hoist. In and out, and that's the kind of luck St. John's has had thus far. Correa 0 for 7. Here's Aliyah Edwards. Off to Olivia Nelson Adota. The two post attacks. Yeah, that is a dangerous combo when the two of them are in the game together. Nelson Adota has that range so she can space things out and both Edwards and Nelson Adota can really distribute and pass well out of the post. A timeout call by Joe Tartamella. Those issues we were talking about, they've mounted here for St. John's on the offensive end. And Tartamella will look to try to find an adjustment. Millions of kids nationwide are without their normal access to sports and play due to COVID-19. That's why Fox Sports and Good Sports are restoring play for kids in the programs that serve them through donations of brand new sports equipment. Text PLAY to the number on your screen to help keep kids in the game. Well, speaking of the kids, it is great to see the Tardamella family here. Shannon, his mom and wife to Joe, and the four kids, Brady, JJ, Riley, and Tierney, all making the trip from Long Island. That is really special, because really for all of these players, their families have not been able to come to games. So the Big East allowing some limited tickets for family and friends, and Tartamellas are a great family. JJ has actually joined me in a post-game interview with <laughs> Coach Bunce before, and he stole the show. Yes, you've gotten to know the Tartamella family on the air. A shot clock violation to come out of the timeout for St. John's. How about this UConn defense thus far? Yeah, they've just been locking up, applying pressure. I think St. John's needs to start trying to get some quicker looks because a couple of times now they've just run it down and are relying on a bailout shot.
Mule has gotten off to a hot start. Beckers just weaving her way to the basketball. Off to Nelson Adota. A little bit long. Well, Kim, St. John's has shot three for 17. They don't have a three, but that being said, it could be 20, if not more. Right now, they just cannot seem to find anything. Correa from the elbow. And she is still without a field goal. And we've got a foul on that dish from Yule. It's on Correa. That's her second. That's big. She was she picked up her second pretty early yesterday against Xavier. They kept her on the floor for most of the game, but that's something she has battled with at times throughout this season. But looks like coach is going to leave her out there. She's got to be really careful. Nelson Adota from Beckers. Nelson Adota just so smart in getting her positioning, that time screening and rolling in her teammates. Really good about having good angles to get those passes into her. She had 19 points, 10 rebounds on Monday in the win over Marquette. A win that Gino Oriema told us was good for his team because they had to fight for it. Yeah, that was a 10-point victory for Marquette, and especially at this time of year. Oh, Beckers with the pick six. Paige Beckers all the way. Huskies just continuing to turn over and take it back the other way. A second timeout taken by Joe Tartamella in this second quarter. UConn on a roll. Paige Beckers, player of the year, defense to offense, UConn, 13 fast break points. The UConn Huskies have forced eight St. John's turnovers, converting them into nine points already. The defense getting out. Yeah, the Huskies are just getting these live ball turnovers and taking it right back the other way. Nine points off of turnovers for the Huskies. And you see everybody getting involved. Westbrook, Mule, Beckers, all of these guards are out in passing lanes. They're pressuring ball handlers. And the Red Storm just hasn't been able to settle into that pressure yet. The Huskies making their debut in the Big East tournament for the first time in quite some time. And they are relying on that defensive pressure to get it going early. Well, you go back to that win Monday over Marquette, and that's what Gino Oriema said he learned about his team is that in the event, Correa with her first make, in the event that shots aren't falling, can we do it with our defense when it matters most in March? Right, because in March, you know, in this tournament and NCAAs, it's not always going to be a pretty win. You're going to have off shooting nights. You're going to have teams get hot, players get hot. But how can you find ways to string together a win? And I think that was a great game for them, just in terms of resetting, heading in. What do we still need to get better at? What, what didn't we do that well in that win over Marquette? Mule took a gamble. Bailey unable to connect. A couple of tips, and it will stay with the Johnnies. How do you think, as a player, you go 21 and 1, and for these UConn players, the majority of the team being newcomers this year, how do they understand, as Correa hits her second straight, the idea? just not falling into game after game. Right. I mean, I think I they did schedule well. They, they played some big-time opponents. They had that one loss to Arkansas, but big wins over Tennessee, South Carolina. And I think those were big moments where these young players really learned on the fly what it takes to close out a game or in the instance of Arkansas learning from how they could close better. So I think those type of games are really preparing these young players and just learning on the fly. Correa finding her shot the last two trips down. A little bit short here. 
Paige Becker's up ahead. What a pass to Williams. She couldn't finish, but on the second try, gets fouled and scores it. Yeah, we talked about the connection of these two, John. Paige Beckers, as a freshman, just having that court vision, perfectly placed pass. Kristen Williams, good placement, just sneaking over the back line of that defense, getting her own miss. And Kristen Williams is locked in early in this game, loving her mentality, her energy she's bringing to the floor. It's really interesting because that was also something Coach Oriana told us about this week. Clegg over to Bailey here. Bailey off. That when Becker stepped into the practice facility with some of the more experienced players, there's that level of uncertainty. Like, how good is she? How is it going to work with all of us? Gina Oriema said about an hour into our first practice, Edwards with the left hand. We knew that Paige Beckers and everybody were going to work well. Yeah, and I think that's the beauty of Paige Beckers, as good as she's been scoring the ball. I mean, watching her, you can tell she likes assisting the best. And I think her teammates have both trusted her that she could make them all better and then just allowed her to relax and let her know, hey, we need you to score the ball at a high rate if we're going to be good heading into March. Six on the shot clock for Clegg. Clegg between two defenders. Shut down by Beckers. Beckers off the denial. A five on two. That was nearly a great connection with Newell and Clegg to the deck. Edwards to the deck. This is postseason basketball. Becker's fouled. Yeah, you can see the intensity. For the first time in a while, some of these teams had a, a couple days off in between games with different pauses and cadenced schedules. They've been going pretty hard. Games every other day, a couple games per week. And you can see that these players are rested. They've had to be in quarantine here at Mohegan Sun. And you can tell they're happy to be out there. Unique Drake, Drake returning for St. John's. Paige Becker's 81% at the line this year. I thought it was also telling earlier this week with the media. She was asked how many times Gina Oriema has told her to stop passing the ball and actually take a shot. And she said, if, if I told you, if I had a dollar for every time I've done it, I'd have a million. Yeah, that, I mean, any time I saw Coach Oriema doing a, a post-game interview, it was him telling Paige, would you, would you shoot the ball? So I think she is finally settling in to know that she's a primary scorer on this team, and she's really good at making those reads. When is it her look, and when is it her time to kick it out? Mule off the miss. Beckers. Lani Correa up ahead to Kadeja Bailey. Bailey with a tough pull. Mule stood in her tracks. Here comes Nika Mule. She's got Edwards. The freshmen combine, and Edwards will head to the line. Nika Mule has just had such an impressive motor in this game. John making the defensive stance, grabbing the rebound, taking it all the way, dishing off to Aaliyah Edwards, who will get a trip to the free throw line. Great to see Avina Westbrook back after turning that left ankle. Aaliyah Edwards, we talked a little bit about her before. How about this comparison from the UConn coaching staff? Nafisa Collier. Hmm, interesting. I was thinking even a more like Tina Charles esque, just a really physical post player. I think Nafisa has expanded her game a little bit in terms of range, but I'm sure they're looking for Aaliyah Edwards to do the same in her coming years. Collier with the Minnesota Lynx and all WNBA selection last year. And now Vina Westbrook's back, and she's back with a steal. Off to Williams. St. John's thought she might have traveled. Aliyah Edwards. 
How about Nelson Adota with her ninth board? There's just, there's no boxing out right now from St. John's. There's a lot of people jumping up for the ball, but no one is making contact. Olivia Nelson Adota, 10 points, nine rebounds, has been an unstoppable force. The back door for Drake, who answers. The Huskies just keep on coming. Alina Westbrook. Olivia Nelson Adota with a double double now, and Edwards puts it in. It's going to be a long afternoon if, if you don't commit to boxing out. That is now nine offensive rebounds for the Husky. They're just, there's no will to box out and attack the glass from that end right now from St. John's. Oh, how about the will of Edwards? Aliyah Edwards on the run. That I can see the Nafisa Collier right there. Nafisa <laughs> Collier really good on the defensive end. Aaliyah Edwards showing us a little bit of everything early in this game. A foul here on Mule. Aaliyah Edwards, Biggie Six Woman of the Year, getting in the passing lanes at 6 3. Take it coast to coast. Aaliyah Edwards, I mean, Paige Beckers has obviously gotten a ton of hype, but I think Aaliyah Edwards has been a little bit underrated as a result. She is a really promising force inside for this Huskies team. There's a great story today in the Hartford Current about Edwards that details her life and the things she's been through. This is a great sign for UConn to have Anna Makarov back after she's been out with a leg injury for the last couple months. Yeah, this is a welcome sign for a Huskies team that isn't that deep. Oh, unfortunately, she gets whistled for the foul right back into the game, but she's happy to be in there. But this is a, a UConn team that has really just been playing about seven deep over the past few weeks. So now to have Makarot back in there, another solid option off the bench. Uh, still a young player, but somebody with experience, a sophomore. So I'm sure it'll take her a little bit of time to reacclimate to the speed and physicality of the game, but definitely a great sign to have her start working back in there for the Huskies. Sarah Zabrecki connecting on both free throws. If you're in St. John's position, Kim, where you've been outscored by 22 in the paint, you've turned the ball over 11 times, how do you handle that halftime locker room? Well, I think they need to start by finding a sense of pride. I think they need to find some leadership on the floor. There's an offensive foul. And it's taken by Clegg, who's provided some of it. Right, that, that's a prideful play. That's putting your body on the line when things aren't going very well. I think it's going to be a, a big test of character, how they come out in the second half. But it, it all starts with banding together being more committed on the glass, being a little bit more disciplined offensively, making better decisions. Three second difference between shot and game clock. Farley swarmed by Nelson Adota. Correa guarded tightly by Westbrook and couldn't get a clean attempt. Still three on the shot clock. Kadeja Bailey. And a foul is called on UConn. A foul coming in to bail them out. It's on Olivia Nelson Adota. That was a well defended possession from UConn. You saw Avina Westbrook all over Leilani Correa, making her throw up a tough two. Looks like they'll review this to make sure that the foul was indeed before time expired or how much time should be on the clock. Coming up on the Jeep Grand Cherokee Halftime Report, Rob Stone and the gang will preview the Big East Men's Tournament. Plus, Kim and I will recap the first half of this one. Well, Nelson Adota also was saying to 
Gino Oriema, are you sure it was me who committed the foul? There was a bit of a scramble on the baseline here. We'll have to see what this crew sees. Speaking of Nelson Adota, I mean, already up to a double-double at the half. John, 10 points, 11 boards, five of them on the offensive end. She's just been untouchable. Let's take a look here. One on the clock. So it looks like the shot was off before the buzzer, but I didn't see the official's hand go up until there were zeros on the clock. It was a little bit of a late whistle. So I, I think the shot attempt was off, but the official's hand didn't go up to signal until there was zero on the clock. Crystal Apolinas, Jules Gallian, Mark Resch. Still discussing here. Take another look at the shot clock above the basket. Our crew will get us that play back in a moment. But there's obviously a discrepancy here because of the fact that that shot was away and the foul came in awfully late. UConn was about to race up the floor with 3.9 to go. All right, let's see. Looking at that shot clock, top of the screen, there's the buzzer. Foul gets called several seconds after the shot is released. Nelson Adoto definitely gets her with the body. It's just a, a matter of whether they whistled the foul in time. One on the clock. So the shot gets off in time. Zero on the shot clock. Still 3.9 on the game clock. So they've got 4.5 on the game clock and Crystal Apollon is turning to the UConn bench saying two shots here. And it looks like they've added a little bit of time back on the clock. Yep. So it'll be two free throws for Bailey and then 4.5 on the game clock. Well, more than enough time for UConn. 3.9 would have been, but they add that on. So here is Kadeja Bailey. 81% from the line this year. And you just wonder what Gino Ariema and Paige Beckers are thinking about. I think he's telling her, get up the floor. Look for her. She doesn't need much time to get up. He said she's like a quarterback who, no matter what pressure it is, she just handles it. 4.5. Westbrook. Great pass to Nelson Adota. Here's Paige Beckers to beat the buzzer. They got a clean look. The freshman just a little long. Nonetheless, UConn up by 23. That was a great draw up. <laughs> and that's what you, you want in these situations. Keep running your sets. It's halftime here at Mohegan Sun. Our score, UConn 38, St. John's 15. After the break, we'll send it out to our studio in Los Angeles for the Jeep Grand Cherokee Halftime Report. Getting set for the third quarter of the Big East Women's Basketball Tournament quarterfinal matchup between UConn and St. John's. Huskies up by 23. The rest of the bracket, a reminder, all three quarterfinals today following this one will be on FS2 semis. Tomorrow, championship Monday on FS1. We've got DePaul and Villanova next in the 4-5 game. What do you see in that matchup? That's going to be a great one. DePaul struggled a little bit towards the end of the regular season. We know they are the three-time defending champs of this tournament, but Villanova has maybe the next best player after Paige Becker, some would argue the best, leading the Big East in scoring and rebounding this season. Nelson Adoda. 
And Correa and St. John's with a stop to start this second half. Finally, some resistance on Nelson Adota. Yeah, that's a big, big start just to get that confidence, momentum a little bit. Coach Tartamella going with a little bit of a lineup change to start this second half. Camry Clegg with the ball replacing the bigger Raven peoples going smaller to start this half. Clegg providing some energy plays in the first 20 minutes. Farley shaking her head, not seeing anybody open. It was deflected, so it stays with St. John's with seven. There's been a couple times this afternoon where we've seen Raven Peoples, or sorry, Raven Farley get caught a couple steps outside of that three-point line with really nowhere to go with the ball. I'd like to see her try and stay a little bit more active, even if it's just in a triple threat position, looking to make a crisp pass. Farley with two, and she traveled. A 12th St. John's turnover. And Mule travels. Well, for this St. John's team, they were chosen in the top five of the Big East preseason. Paul expected to be an NCAA tournament contender. And a big reason why they have fallen this year is Quadasha Hoppy, their leader on and off the court, going down with a shoulder injury. Yeah, this was a big blow. You see. Hoppy there on the bench, but have been averaging 18 points per game. She's the Big East active leading scorer, more than 1,300 career points. And you could just see they miss her leadership, her calming presence out there. But even just at the half, we saw Hoppy huddling the girls up, acting as a coach on the floor. And she does plan to come back next season. So we wish Kudasha Hoppy the best of luck in her recovery from shoulder surgery. We have enjoyed covering her as a player and look forward to her returning. I have to tell you, Kim, it's been something to watch her coach. Yeah, she is so engaged. Like I said, she was huddling the girls up, trying to get them back focused for the second half. And you could tell she's got a high IQ, maybe a future coach once her playing career is done. Williams is fouled on the take by Farley. Harley did not like the call. Her second foul. Nobody with more than two in this game. And so Kristen Williams back to the free throw line. Peoples back in for Farley. We talk about St. John's being one of the bigger teams, but just right here you can see that size differential of Olivia Nelson Adota just a couple inches over both Peoples and Farley. And a big reason why she has been so dominant because there's just not that many players of her size in this conference right now. It's why UConn entered the postseason, top 10 in the country with 131 blocks on the season. Mule has been non-stop in making things happen. Her third steal, and off it to Beckers. Mule goes down, though, and is hurt. And she's holding her left leg. Mm. Tough to watch, Kim. Yeah, this is just a, a tough moment. Coach Oriema right by her side and was having a fantastic start to this game and just a, a moment you hate to see. Gina Oriema has talked about Nika Mule's play, her hustle, saying that she just never stops in practice. We'll take a look here. She'd gotten another steal, was on the move. Seems to have, that left ankle looked to have severely rolled. 
Hopefully it's it's nothing too severe. It definitely looked like it was a, a roll there rather than just a kind of a freak non-contact thing. Kind of got caught on the foot of unique Drake there. So sending our best to Nika Mule right now, but UConn Atib, who was just getting a player back in Ana Makarat, doesn't have much depth. And obviously Mule was having such a big impact on this game. Avina Westbrook checking back in. She already came up limping earlier in this game, has battled her way through it with her left ankle. So a series of some unfortunate events for the Huskies, despite the fact that they are up by 29. St. John's still without a three. Becker's voice and hits. Paige Becker's first triple of the day. And St. John's has chosen to go under ball screens on Paige Beckers. They've lucked out up until that moment because she hadn't hit, but you have to stay over the top of Beckers, who shoots close to 50% from three on the season. Farley off the give from Correa. Farley fades. And UConn's defense has not let up. Paige Becker, as we mentioned, she is tough from anywhere on the floor. Up, and here you just see a little bit of a handoff around, from Edwards. Around, no Eve. defender comes over the top. Paige Becker says, I will take that look. One of the best three-point shooters in the country this season. Now a five-second violation for St. John's. And that's just, that's some focus that's cutting hard, working to get open just the little things that Coach Tartamella would like his group to come out with after a really tough first half shooting wise. We talked about the loss of Hoppy and as much as Correa has been someone who can score, it's Hoppy, Joe Tartamella has told us, who's been the playmaker. She's the person you know when you need a bucket, she's going to be able to get it to you. And it's it's been tough on Leilani Correa, their leading scorer, because now the defense can just really fully focus on her instead of both her and Hoppy. But they certainly just miss that calming presence, that leadership that Hoppy would bring to the floor. Emma Nolan, the sophomore, has checked in for the Red Storm. Unique Drake with the basketball, just two points today. And she's averaged 17 per game over the course of her last four. Peoples couldn't fight through. Here's Drake needing to find something. And that's just the kind of day it's been for the Red Storm offensively. Beckers and Correa getting tangled up. Now Beckers with the left hand. Just a delay of game warning off that make, but Paige Beckers. We talked about her poise, her control. This was a really tough finish over 6-3 peoples with the offhand laying it up nice and high on the glass. I mean, that's just a really tough shot for a freshman. You played this game at Penn, and you've played alongside some great players. You've analyzed the game and have seen all different kinds of players and talents. Why is she unique? I think what we're seeing from her as just a freshman is she's never rust. She's never sped up. Kadeja Bailey gets it going for St. John's, but it's really just her poise. I mean, normally for a freshman, they have to adjust to the speed of the game, the physicality, and that has just seemed to come so naturally and so easily for Paige Beckers. I think the three-point shooting has impressed me. We knew she could score, we knew she could pass, but I didn't know she was a 47% three-point shooter. That has been a really big part of her game. Just ridiculous figures. The legend growing game after game. Beckers on the pull up here. Paige Beckers as advertised. 
and just calm. She takes that extra half a second, that deliberate speed to see what is the defense throwing at me? What's my best look here? 15 points for the freshman. Correa from the corner. That's St. John's first triple. Kristen Williams off the screen. Beckers. Paige Beckers off this time. And with a clap off the miss. St. John's got to keep moving that ball. A lot of standing around right now. Drake knocks it down and a couple of makes in a row for St. John's. Yeah, you mentioned Drake. I mean, she's been having a great couple of games. There's Correa on the steal. They're on the move. She's got Bailey. Kadeja Bailey lays it in. And the Red Storm with a spurt on a day where their offense has been mostly cool. One of their best sequences. Westbrook, just like that, Avina Westbrook with her first three. UConn guards just recognizing players are staying under those screens. They're pulling up for the long jumpers. Joe Tartamella said that was the balance of trying to strategize because UConn's been so strong in the paint like that. Paige Beckers has 17. Beckers just gliding to that rim, staying aggressive in the open floor. St. John's not putting a body in front of her. A timeout called by the Red Storm. A 30-point game in UConn's opening act in their return to the Big East Tournament. The final Saturday in Big East men's action. Nika Mule has come back out from the locker room on crutches, not putting any weight on that left leg. Uh, I mean, that's just a tough scene. Nika Mule just has been the heart of this team at many points throughout the season. She had been playing so well in this game, and it, it, you hate to see any player go down with an injury at this point of the season, heading into tournament play. We hope Nika Mule's okay. You see the ice on that lower left leg area. Obviously a, a tough scene with having to go back to back to back if you continue to move on, but hopefully it's nothing too severe and they they don't get her back this weekend. She'll be back for March Madness. Talking with some of her teammates, they said Nika Mule is one of the toughest people we've ever been around, period. And you could see that just by the way she was playing. I mean, she was diving after loose ball after loose ball, getting in passing lanes, firing her teammates up. And we just mentioned this UConn team, already a pretty shallow rotation. They had just gotten Anna Makarat back in the game in this one for a couple minutes after she missed 13 games. Makarat seeing some time in the first half. As Correa off on the elbow jumper, but an extra opportunity for the Red Storm. Who are three for their last three. A scramble for it. Edwards to the hardwood again. Aliyah Edwards has gone down to the floor a number of times in this game. And we have another timeout. Edwards and the Huskies dominating at Mohegan. UConn up by 30 in the Big East Tournament quarterfinals. What does dominance look like, Kim Adams? We'll show you. UConn, just incredible numbers. Haven't lost a conference game since 2012-2013. That is when they lost to Notre Dame in the Big East Championship before moving to the American Athletic Conference. Haven't missed a Final Four since 2007. Mm. Didn't miss a Sweet 16 since the early 90s. And one note that's not on that graphic that I find incredibly Impressive. They have not lost back-to-back -back games since 19...
93. I mean, how is that possible? Over a thousand straight games where they have not lost on back-to-back -back nights. That's the last time that they were unranked, too. It's just the consistency of this program is unbelievable. Next level stuff. Where were you in 93? I was alive. I'm not going to put out too many details. I don't think you were alive, but I was. I was young. You had a basketball. I'm sure of it. You were touching a, a basketball early, right away. I was definitely at, at some games watching my dad officiate. I was, I was getting to know the game. St. John's has found their offense a little bit here down the stretch in this third quarter. Eight on the shot clock for Correa, who pulls, and Leilani Correa just hasn't been her day. Anna Makarat. Wide open. That one short for Griffin, who's checked in. And this is where St. John's, they're down big. You just want to keep playing hard. Little miscue there, but... You know, it's been a tough season with injuries, pauses. You just want to feel like you leave this game on a good mark, keep playing hard, keep playing together, keep building this group together for next season. They plan to have Kwadasha Hoppy back for next year. Of course, this year with COVID-19, as Kristen Williams finishes, then a steal for Westbrook, and the foul, Evina Westbrook. Westbrook is grinning ear to ear. I think she is almost surprised that that ball seemingly just dropped into her hands. But I mean, this is UConn. It is strictly business after they score. There's no celebrating. It is right back to work on the other end. Westbrook just sliding in there to take that one. Nine points for Westbrook. Knock her out with a deflection. She's called for a foul. There's just another testament, and Joe Tarnamella was saying this. You have to be great against UConn. But even that might not be enough. And if you take one playoff, it could be the game. Definitely on, on either end, especially defensively, because they look to get each other involved so much. So four people can be defending perfectly, but if that fifth person gets lazy or is a step late to help, Huskies will make you pay. Or McLean checking in for UConn as Camry Clay knocks down the corner three. That's been a positive for St. John's. Back door, just out of the range of Williams. Anna Mockrat, great to see her back out there. First game back after missing the last 13 for the Huskies. She was solid in December, had a stretch of contributions as Raven Farley commits an offensive foul with a shove personal at the elbow. Got a clarification now with the officials. They're going to discuss this. Credit to these officials, too. Jules Gallion, Mark Ress, Crystal Apolinas are on today's crew. They have grinded all season long, going from game to game, masked up, following the health and safety protocols. They're also in this bubble atmosphere at Mohegan. Sounds like the officials are taking a look at the contact here. So we're looking near that free throw line. Ooh, Raven Farley just puts two hands on the defender and shoves her. So the officials are gonna look at this and look to elevate this from a common foul 
to definitely, it's got to at least be an intentional foul. I mean, that might be grounds for a disqualifying foul. It, intentional foul would mean it was unnecessary, excessive. A disqualifying foul, which would be an ejection, means there was some malicious intent to that. No part of that was a basketball play. That's just some frustration. You see the unsportsmanlike there. Did you feel it was at that point? Yeah, I, you see, we saw the flagrant one, flagrant two there in, in women's. It's called unsportsmanlike or disqualifying. I mean, that was, like you said, not a basketball play whatsoever. It's definitely an unsportsmanlike foul, equivalent to a flagrant one, but that could be grounds for a disqualifying foul. I mean, Raven Farley just two hands and shoves the defender. Well, and here's the thing. Sometimes we see plays where there's a lot of contact or a big thud to the floor. McLean didn't. It's not as if that she, she took sell. a sharp fall. <laughs> she no. actually, I mean, she bounced right back up. Right. Good for McLean because that was not the most sportsmanlike play, I would say. Just you don't want to see that at this point. You want to, like we said, end things on a good note for your team. Take one more look at Farley there on the elbow. Just two hands pretty violently throws McLean to the floor. Caught her by surprise. And Farley showed her frustration earlier with an official. It's been a tough outing. This review has taken some time. On an aside with Mer McLean, Anna Makarot, Gino Oriema looking to his bench right now. We talked about finding that depth this time of year. It's been something that they've been looking to grow, and especially with Nika Mule going down with an injury here, some uncertainty there, Kim. It's an interesting extra layer. Right. I think it's important to get players in the game at times like this so that they're feeling completely comfortable when their number might be called in a really tight spot and they need to know where they're supposed to be offensively, defensively. So UConn, you know, their, their top group, their core players have been so strong that they haven't had to go to their bench much, but it's always a luxury to have those go-to players. And, and you see the youth on this team, zero seniors, seven freshmen making up the bulk of this team. So you just have to be ready. You don't know when your number is going to be called. All right. Now it appears we have a decision, and Joe Tartamella does not like the decision. Well, Farley's still on the floor, so it, it couldn't have been a disqualifying foul, which would have ejected her. Clean off on the first free throw. And yeah, as you said, Farley still on the floor. It is ruled as an intentional foul on Farley. I'm not sure how you could argue that <laughs> that shouldn't have been an intentional foul. At the very Pretty least. Clear. Yeah. So a four second difference between shot and game clock and Kristen Williams. She's lost no heat. 14 points for the junior. Williams, Beckers combining for 31. It's been patented UConn here today in the Big East quarters. Six seconds for Correa. Leilani Correa off the dribble. Here's Makarot to Kristen Williams. She tried to beat it. Just not in the nick of time. UConn making quite the statement in their opening act to the Big East Tournament. The Connecticut Huskies, the 18-time Big East Tournament champions, up by 35 heading into this fourth quarter. To take a look at the tournament bracket, DePaul and Villanova is up next in the 4-5 game on FS2, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Kim, my question to you is, who on this bracket do you think can compete the best with Connecticut? 
Ooh, I mean, a couple of teams playing really well right now. Marquette, Seton Hall. I mean, if those two were to advance, that is a big time battle on the other side of the bracket. I think we're seeing a Seton Hall trio playing really well right now, John, in Park Lane, Elmore, Espinosa, Hunter. They don't have the size that UConn does, but they have three really tough-minded, competitive players, and they've, they've given UConn more trouble than anybody in the conference in this year's first go-around. The lone team in the league to lead UConn at the half this season. Those Seton Hall Pirates we will have them tonight, 9 Eastern time, FS2 against Creighton. Makaran straight away. Drake. St. John's has just been cold from the field, just 26%. But I feel like we have definitely seen them pick up with some passion and some pride in this half, which is what we talked about. What did they need to bring out? So it, it's been a cold shooting night, but we've seen the effort still there. Seen them playing better together in this second half, John. Nina Westbrook, that was halfway home, an offensive board pulled in by Griffin. Williams just short. So Makarov, Westbrook. Griffin Williams. And that's really the one area that they haven't been excellent at today, John. Just two of 13 shooting for the Huskies behind the arc, something that Coach Oriema is always talking to his team, half jokingly at times, saying, We're not really a great shooting team, but if they could get that going. Just another weapon. Well, they've been a great defensive team, Aubrey Griffin. And Aubrey Griffin, a player who just comes in and makes those high-energy plays for Coach Oriema's team. Really starting to see some more minutes this season. Defense to offense. She has just a great combination of length, of speed, of athleticism. Griffin, just a sophomore out of Ossining, New York. Really strong high school hoops program there. Now Edwards with the offensive board, and now she's fouled. Huskies up 34 to 24 on the glass. Here is Aaliyah Edwards at the line. The thought in mind with the purple and gold hair, a tribute to Kobe Bryant. She has always looked up to Mamba. But in a feature story this week by Alexa Filippo, who does a great job covering UConn for the Hartford Current, she wrote about Aaliyah's introduction to basketball. And it came from her older brother, Jermaine, 14 years older than Aaliyah. Unfortunately, Jermaine passed away in 2017. But Aaliyah plays, lives every day, channeling her brother's mentality because she was in the gym 6 a.m. every morning growing up with Jermaine working on her game. That is really special. And I mean, you see that passion reflected in her game as McLean gets it to go in transition. But yeah, Aaliyah Edwards, I mean, you don't have to question the effort, the work ethic, the passion. She has been so impressive in her freshman campaign. Her mom, Jackie, coaching her as well. That one goes for Raven Farley, her first points of the day. Beckers, 17 points in her Big East Tournament debut. Behind the back to Edwards. And it's out to Bailey here. Clegg. Here comes Beckers again. Another dime. McLean couldn't finish. You think St. John's big picture? What would be your off-season priorities? 
I think definitely the the ball protection has to improve. Unique Drake, she's not had a great afternoon, but she's she's been really good. She's come a long way. I think they meet, need maybe another ball handler or two that can really get into the paint and distribute when you have a player on the perimeter who's as talented as Leilani Correa is. And maybe just getting a little bit quicker in transition from the bigs. Camry Clegg has shown us that quickness, the steal, and she's fouled by Makarov. Let's take a look at the greatness of Paige Becker's assist. There's never a bad time to do it. <laughs> Her court vision just jumps off the screen at you. There's, you know, she likes to put a little flair on some of these passes. Saw her go a little bit behind the back. This layup didn't go, but that's just a perfectly timed and placed pass. She knows how to get her teammates in the right spots, just waits until they can catch it and go right up with it. During the first quarter when she had one of those dimes, we were told this from someone working across the way. Gino Oriema turned to one of the officials and said, if she throws another pass like that, take her out of the game. <laughs> well, it was interesting, John, as we were getting ready to uh, get started here. We had the trophy out for part of our set, and I noticed Paige Beckers took a hard look at that trophy. A little bit of a double take. I, I think she's got it on her mind. She can have a lot of hardware on her mind with the way she plays. Big East player, Big East freshman of the year. Just earlier today, named to the Wooden Final 15 for National Player of the Year. There's been a lot of features and talks about whether or not she could take that. And it's amazing to see just the level of fandom for UConn women's basketball. Basketball in general, women's basketball, the Connecticut Sun, Paige Becker's UConn. I was in an Uber yesterday and it just was talking to the driver a little bit. Didn't really specify why I was here, but said it had something to do with basketball. And he just says, well, you know, UConn is the best basketball player ever, right? And I'm thinking, uh, you mean like a pass player, like a Diana Tarazi, Sue Bird? And he goes, it's Paige Becker's. <laughs> I mean, he was adamant that she is the best basketball player of all time already. Off on the shot, it'll go back to St. John's. That is amazing. And I would say first year of the Big East tournament being back at Mohegan Sun Arena, there's just close family and friends here. But Kim, even in a mostly empty building, you can still feel the passion for women's basketball walking around here. No doubt. I mean, this place is going to be electric. Hopefully next year it's back to normal. But even talking to opposing coaches this week, they're excited to have the UConn fan base pack in this place and hopefully fans of their own as well. But I think everyone's really excited to see Mohegan Sun at full capacity next season and, and hopefully the year after that as well. We've got a three-second violation. On Edwards. It was interesting hearing some of the coaches talk about that, about being at Mohegan. One of them, Jim Crawley, is Providence Friars. Not a far trek at all from Providence to Mohegan. And he said that just the, the family and friends that were able to come yesterday, it makes a difference for these players, these ladies who have played relatively in front of no one. Even 50 fans can sound like a lot more. Yeah, it has to be emotional, honestly. I mean, to, to think of a player of my parents tried to come to every game they could, just to look up there and not have your family in the stand. So for any of them who have fans today, it's got to be pretty special and emotional. On the back down, a foul. That'll send Aubrey Griffin to the line after our timeout. The UConn Huskies well on their way to the Big East semis. This Wednesday, the Big East tournament tips off at MSG. Will Villanova take the conference crown? Will Creighton or Seton Hall rise up? Or will a Cinderella team emerge? Catch all the excitement March 10th through 13th on Fox, FS1, and the Fox Sports app. 
Big East tournament back at the Garden. First one goes for Griffin, and with some limited attendance allowed, it's great to see some dance moves during the break, some energy. And that's what we're looking like at the breaks, too. The DJ in here is keeping the vibes up. Great playlist going on. Pre-game was, we were getting fired up. So it's still a great environment, even though we don't have thousands of fans packed in here. What do you think is the top pre-game playlist song you've heard this year? That's a pretty loaded question. I mean, oh, man. I don't. I may have to get back to you okay. in uh, game two of that. I know we're going to be here for a while. I will think about that and get report back. The answer to come, FS2, 3 Eastern time, Villanova and DePaul. I know you you liked the Nicki Minaj that was going on early in this one, even though you thought it was Cardi B at first, but we'll, we'll get you figured out there. It's a bad mix for me. Mira McLean with the bucket. Mira McLean has gotten some minutes here, eight minutes, and Gino Oriem has talked about the McDonald's All-American getting some more time in the rotation because he really likes how she's been practicing. Yeah, and I think that's so important because when you come into a UConn program that's typically loaded with many McDonald's All-Americans, you may not necessarily get the big moments, the big minutes in your freshman year, but you're going to soon be a big piece of things. I think we're seeing that with Aubrey Griffin this year. Didn't play much as a freshman, now a big part of the rotation. So Mir McLean has been impressive. She's brought that energy. She's been impressive on the defensive end. That's something that Gino Oriema talked with us a lot about this week. You think about it, Kim. COVID-19 pauses. The Huskies have had them. Everybody's basically had some way of getting impacted by this virus as Griffin is short here. But he said when you don't have a senior and you have seven freshmen, he walked in to his first practice throwing out all the habits that he's been doing for the last 35 years and said, you know what? You have to take a totally different approach. You've got to try to be great, but you've got to do it in a different way. Yeah, I'm sure it's just been an interesting dynamic for him as a coach because you do have to give those freshmen a little bit of leeway, a little bit of a learning curve as Nolan gets it to drop for St. John's. You, you have to give them some time to grow, but in this year also needing them to perform well for you because there aren't too many other options. Sailor Poffenberger checking in now for UConn. And she's a player who's joined the team early. She graduated high school a semester early and joined the team around the new year and getting a head start at a unique situation this year because everybody can get an extra year with the COVID situation going on. So Poffenbarger said, why not get up and start getting acclimated to my teammates, to the college life? Her seventh appearance of the season. And she's already got a gold medal, of course. She won gold at the 2019 FIBA Americas U16 Championship. Second on the team. Gene Oriema has not been afraid to say it at times. We don't bring in losing players. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. Those, some of those stats we saw on the graphic earlier. There's a reason this team has not lost back-to-back -back games since 1993. And oh, by the way, they have the number one player coming in next year in Ozzy Fudd. Ozzy Fudd, big best friend of Paige Beckers, those two are going to be electrifying to watch together. Bud was asked this week in a story, are you surprised by anything you've seen from Paige Beckers? And she said, absolutely not. And that's what stands out probably the most. In the midst of greatness, there's not that much surprise as Griffin fouled on the take. I know you asked Paige at one point, one of those big games, does she, does anything surprise her about herself? And she, I think she replied to you that she had six turnovers in the game. Yeah, she said probably the six turnovers I had. It was after the South Carolina game where she had 31 points. What a win for the Huskies in that one-two battle in stores. 
And in the midst of South Carolina, Don Staley's team looked like him. They were on their way to a big road win. Then Paige Beckers happened, as our friend Lisa Byington said, the magic of Paige Beckers. And Paige Beckers happened in that win over Tennessee on the road where she was injured, came out of the game, came back in, was limping around and hit the dagger of a three-pointer. We have said Paige Beckers, I mean, it's, I guess what's most impressive to me is how she's handled all of this, the attention, the awards, the accolades, and she still just seems like such a down-to-earth, level-headed kid. Nolan hitting the first. Well, coming up, game two of our four-game marathon. It'll be on FS2, 3 Eastern time. The 4-5 matchup, unexpected. We did not see this coming at the beginning of the week. DePaul, they've won the last three Big East tournaments. They're the fourth seed taking on fifth seed at Villanova. What do you think that matchup will feature? It's going to feature some big-time scoring. we got some... Great guard play, and Lexi held Sonia Morris. Gabriel gets it to go. But Maddie Segris, one of the best scorers in the nation, will be on full display in that next matchup. Led the Big East in scoring and rebounding, so look out for that. 3 Eastern time, we'll have it on FS2. As DePaul has lost 3 of 4, needing to get on track. Nolan... And Griffin with the board, and that's going to do it. The Connecticut Huskies will head to their 26th straight Big East Tournament semifinals. That'll do it for us. The UConn Huskies beating St. John's and advancing to tomorrow's semis. On the other side, we've got Pac-12 basketball for you on FS1.